Hello friends and welcome to another lecture on chemical engineering thermodynamics. This is Professor Arvind Prasad and today we shall study about activity coefficient and Van Laar equation. The excess Gibbs free energy is a function of temperature, pressure and the mole fraction of the components in the mixture. It should be noted that the excess Gibbs free energy for a liquid mixture is a very weak function of pressure, so this can be neglected. The effects of pressure can be neglected. The excess Gibbs free energy over RT, x1, x2, now this can be written as a linear expansion, which is A plus B, x1 minus x2 plus C, x1 minus x2, the whole square, plus so on. The right. The right hand side is the redlich kister expansion. Now this expansion or this assumption that the excess Gibbs free energy is a linear function of the mole fractions for a binary mixture, can this assumption can be made only for a very weakly polar liquid mixture. If the compounds are very strongly polar, uh, for a mixture of let us say H2SO4 water or HFN water, you really cannot make this assumption. You cannot really cannot take the redlich kister expansion as valid. Now, in the redlich kister expansion, if we assume that A, B, C, that is all the constants, they are zero for a binary mixture, we have G by RT is equal to I 1 to 2 Xi ln gamma I. We will have if A is equal to B is equal to C and all the constants are 0, then we will have that gamma 1 is equal to gamma 2 is equal to 1, which means it is an ideal solution. So what this basically means is that for an ideal solution, there is no excess Gibbs free energy. Now, how do we get a modules one parameter model out of it? We assume B, C and all the constants after C onwards, they are zero and A is not equal to zero or A is a constant. So we get the excess Gibbs free energy as A x1 x2. Now we know that if we differentiate the total excess Gibbs free energy over RT, with respect to n1, holding t, p and n2 constant, we get ln gamma 1. Similarly, we get ln gamma 2, where what we do is we differentiate the total Gibbs free energy, excess Gibbs free energy over RT with n2 holding n1 constant. Now, if we do this mathematical operation for G over RT A X1 X2, we will get ln gamma 1 as A X2 square and ln gamma 2 as A X1 square. Now let us have a look at Margules two parameter model. For a two parameter model, we assume that all the constants from C onwards, they are 0 and A and B are non-zero and they are constants. Then G E over R T X1 X2 is equal to A plus B X1 minus X2. Now this is only for a binary solution. Now what we do is we assume A plus B as A21 and A minus B as A12. And we get the expression as G E over R T that is the excess Gibbs free energy over R T as A21 X1 plus A12 X2 the whole multiplied by x1 into x2. And therefore, from applying the differentiation rules for getting gammas, if we apply it to this equation too, we will get ln gamma 1 and ln gamma 2, which is shown on the screen. Now, this is the equation for Margules two-parameter model. Here you have two parameters that is A12 
and a two one. There are two parameters here. Now for a Van Laar equation, it's slightly different. X one, X two over G over R T is taken as a linear expansion where it is taken as a dash plus b dash x1 minus x2. Therefore, we have a dash plus b dash is equal to 1 over a21 dash and a dash minus b dash is equal to 1 over a12 dash. And therefore, we get the Van Laar's equation solving it putting these constants in this equation and solving by the differential rule, differentiation rule that I had uh, discussed earlier in the slide to get gamma 1 and gamma 2, we get the following equations for Van Laar. These are the Van Laar equations. So we get ln gamma 1 is equal to a12 dash 1 plus a21 dash x1, a12 dash x2, the whole raised to minus 2 and ln gamma 2 as a21 dash in brackets 1 plus a12 dash x2 over a21 dash x1 raised to minus 2. Now here also we can see that the Van Laar equation is a two parameter model. The first thing that we need to understand is that the constants can be found by infinite dilution activity coefficients. But note, all the three equations, they have no theoretical foundation. They are only merely a mathematical curve fitting exercise to an experimental data. So we have an experimental PXY data. We get the ln gamma 1 and gamma 2 from that pxy data and this has been discussed in one of the lectures in my it is available in my playlist and you will find the uh, card for that also above and uh, noting that it doesn't have a theoretical foundation and also noting that we are only going to get it from the experimental PXY data. It's important to understand that it is only valid for the temperature at which the constants were derived for from the experimental data. So this comes as a advice to all of you. We can only take these constants and make the boiling pressure curves or derive the boiling pressure curves out of this. We can never use this to make a TXY curve. Please note this. These equations cannot, I repeat once again, these equations cannot be used to construct a TXY curve. Now in distillation, mostly TXY curves are important. So therefore, we need to realize here that these cannot be used. Now, if we want to calculate the boiling pressure versus the concentrations, we use the modified Raoult's law to do so, where in modified Raoult's law, the pressure, the system pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the first component into the activity coefficient of it into the vapor pressure of the first component at the specified temperature. We assume a temperature here to construct the PXY curve. So at that temperature plus X2 into gamma 2 into P2 sat.
So here we come at the end of this very short lecture. Please like, comment and subscribe my channel. And uh, I hope that this has been a very fruitful learning experience for you. With that, I end this lecture. Have a great day.